Good morning everyone! Today, we are going to discuss tips on how to prepare your research methodology. And that will be your Chapter 3. Methodology is a one-by-one -one process on how result will go on. On this chapter, you need to prepare the following. The first one is the research design, the hypothesis, the sampling method or techniques, the sources of data, the participants of the study, the data gathering procedure, statistical treatment of data. So here, you will need your statistician to prepare and guide you on the results of your data gathering. But please be aware that it is your thesis. So that's why you need to be adept on how you will understand the basic statistical tools in relation to your study. So let's start. So let's start first with your research design. So it is as a strategy and overall framework that have been chosen to address the research problem. Research design can be descriptive, correlational, causal comparative, quasi-experimental, and experimental research. Oops! Huwag kayong mabigla kung ano man yung mga research design na yan. Actually, ituturo naman yan ng iyong statistician kung paano niya siya i-discuss. Okay? And because uh, we are on business management course, so dito sa ating course, mostly not all, your research belong to social science mantra. So, ang tawag dun sa research natin is more on a social science research. So, yung research design natin, mostly, ang tawag doon is descriptive research design. Okay? So, mostly. Hindi naman lahat, pero mostly, uh, because this is a social science mantra, mostly ang ating paper ay descriptive research design. Okay. Next is your hypothesis. So, ano ba yung hypothesis? In research, we call it hypothesis. Because we are expecting that there will be a significant difference or significant relationship between variables. In layman terms, it means as a statement of expectation or prediction. So, ibig sabihin yan, from the word hypothesis. Hindi mo alam kung iyon talaga yung mangyayari or hindi. Kaya, meron kang tinatawag na hypothesis. Meron kang expectation or prediction bago mo pa paman magkaroon ng result and discussion. Okay? So, this is an example of your hypothesis. Hypothesis number one. So, there is no significant difference between among the performance of the barangay in Baco or City Cavite in terms of budget preparation. From your hypothesis number two, there is no significant difference among the performances of the barangay in Baco or City, Cavite, in terms of budget authorization. So, saan natin kinukuha yung ating hypothesis? Nakasaad din po yan sa ating statement of the problem. So, hindi kayo malilito kasi once you have your statement of the problem, makakakuha kayo doon uh, ng um, problem kung paano nyo ilalagay yung possible prediction doon sa inyong research paper. And uh, for, from your hypothesis, hindi lang chin-check yung significant difference. Pwede ring significant relationship between the two. Okay? So, hindi lang siya pagkakaiba, kundi pwede ring pagkakapare-pareho. Nung, um, is, uh, nung study na ginagawa mo. Okay. So, number three that we have is yung tinatawag natin sampling technique. So, it means a method on how you will use the individual members or a subset of population to make statistical inferences or conclusion as the basis of your evidence. From the word conclusion, so possible conclusion, ito yung possible na mangyayari. So, inferences means conclusion. Okay? Kaya lang, gagawin natin to para magkaroon tayo ng basihan kung ano yung possible na mangyayari dun sa study natin. Okay? So, ano-ano ba yung mga technique na meron tayo? First one is we have the random sampling, the systematic sampling, the convenience sampling, the cluster sampling, stratified sampling, quota sampling, and snowball sampling. 
So, itong method na to ay ginagamit ng lahat ng statistician dun sa ating paper. Pero mostly, mostly ang nagagamit dito is yung tinatawag na random sampling or yung tinatawag nating quota sampling. So, ano, ano, ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng random sampling? Okay. L yung lahat ng uh, possible, possible uh, datas ay pwede mong gamitin para gawin as a sample or a random sampling. Pagdating naman ng quota sampling, out of 100%, there is a certain percentage na pwede mo, na pwede mo lang pagkunan ng iyong respondent. So, hindi siya lahat kukunan. Okay? For the random sampling naman, for example, out of, kunyari, lahat sila worker, so pipili ka lang or kung sino lang yung sumagot sa data mo, randomly, hindi mo pala pinili, randomly, kung sino yung sumagot and then uh, na, na cover mo na yung percentage na kailangan mo, that's it. So, yun na yung pagkukunan mo ng iyong respondent. So, yun yung magiging basis ng iyong evidence para magawa mo kung ano man yung uh, uh, possible result in discussion na gusto mong mangyari sa paper mo. Okay? So, sources of data... So, dito din discuss yung ating primary data and secondary data. So, alam nyo naman siguro yun, when we say primary data, this is the uh, questionnaire or the data that you have given to your respondent. Ito yung sasagutan nila na data. And uh, with, with that data, magagather natin yung information from your, uh, from your uh, SLP number 1 up to the end. Or pwede rin siyang interview or observation. So, yung interview, pag may kasama siyang interview observation, uh, which is a qualitative data, and the data questionnaire, which is, which is more on a quantitative data be, because it needs an inferential analysis or a statistical treatment. So, pag pinagsama mo yung dalawa na yun, yun yung tinatawag na mixed method, which is mas maganda rather than uh, giving only a data questionnaire. Okay? And then, the secondary data is the data uh, that comes from uh, books, okay? Comes from different journals, clips, newspaper, etc. Or any uh, known website na uh, pwede siyang gawing uh, part of your study. Para lang mag mo yung study or mapatunayan mo or maging source of, uh, source of information mo para matapos yung thesis paper mo. So, yun yung tinatawag nating sources of data and it should be discussed on your uh, methodology or as part of your methodology. Then, uh, next is your participants of the study. So, dito, you need to discuss who will be the respondent of your research study. So, example here, um, the participants are the barangay of Baco or City Cavite with the total number of 73 barangays or at least 80% of barangay. So, yun. So, yun yung magiging participants of the study mo. So, mean to say, uh, uh, these barangays are the one na bibigyan mo ng survey questionnaire or nung data questionnaire mo para matapos or magkaroon ka ng information on how you will get or how you will finish your thesis uh, presentation or thesis pre preparation. Okay. Next is yung tinatawag nating data gathering procedure. So, ano ba yung from the word data gathering procedure? Procedure means steps or methods. So, meaning to say, a data gathering procedure is a step-by-step -step guide on how the proponent finish his or her research study. So, guide natin yan. So, example, paano mo ba siya isusulat as part of data gathering procedure? Sa iyong paragraph, ganito ang ilagay mo. So, for data gathering, researchers ask permission to conduct the study in the barangay of Bacoor City, Cavite. A survey questionnaire was prepared and distributed to the needed number of barangays. Then, the gathered data were prepared for tallying, tabular presentation, and interpretation. So, dito, ibinibigay mo na yung step-by-step -step guide na gagawin mo for your research study. Statistical treatment of data. 
are divided into descriptive statistic and inferential statistic. So, discuss natin ng mas ma, ano, kung ano yung pagkakaiba ng dalawa. So, pag sinabi yung descriptive statistic, ito yung gumagamit ka ng graphs. So, meaning to say, yung SOP number one mo, mostly you are asking for the information, for the personal information of your respondent or for their business information. Uh, you are using graphs. Ito yung ang sinasagot is mostly yung frequency and percentage. Gets? So, madali lang, di ba? Eh, yung next is Statistical treatment of data is yung tinatawag na inferential statistics. Ito yung nagbibigay ka na ng prediction and test hypothesis. Ito yung itinuro ko sa business research regarding kung paano gagawin yung mean, median mode. Okay, yung uh, after ng mean, median mode, yung paggawa ng range, variance. Okay, yung mean deviation mo and standard deviation mo. Uh, with that, statistical treatment of data. Matutulungan ka na magkaroon ng prediction and test hypothesis. This is the end of our discussion and I'm just hoping na naintindihan mo ng mas mabilis at mas madali para ma-prepare mo na ang ating thesis or matapos mo na yung requirements para sa iyong graduation. Again, this is Mam Ching from Cavite State University. Bye-bye po!